Hey guys, Kid here of Burn One, bringing you a new deck profile. This one on the Fate series. Uh, this deck is, I'm showing you is primarily an English deck. There are are cards you would want to substitute in if you were planning to build this in Japanese. I'll try to make some comments about those at the end. But um, because I don't see Fate series being played that often, and this type of deck that I'm going to show you played very often, um, I figured it'd be a fun time to show it off. Also, um, I think a couple weeks ago or so. I did uh, get third place at a locals with the deck. It was a lot of fun to pilot this deck uh, to that spot. So, yeah, um, to get into it, uh, it's this deck is what a lot of players who've been around for a while um, we basically call this coin flip fate because the whole strategy is around flipping cards on the top of your deck to get advantages and to kill your opponent that way. So it's a pretty interesting strategy. Not a lot of decks um, currently play this style, I would say, uh, just because there's not a lot of card effects that are very strong that uh, can warrant this. So this is like one of the main centerpieces of the deck. It's this Lancer card. It's whenever it gets reversed, you reveal the top card of your deck. If it's level two or higher, it goes back to your hand. This is one of the ways we keep advantage going on until we get to our level two game, which is our main game plan to kill our opponent most of the time. So we just kind of abuse this effect because our deck does run a lot of level twos and higher. And uh, we just get this back to our hand often and just replay it and run it into things or side things with a the climax, then bounce it back to our hand uh, the following, ter uh, following turn when it gets ran into. Um, this effect does pretty well too against um, other decks that need to reverse targets. So if you run it in uh, during your attack set, then the next turn they'll have to run into empty slots and they won't be able to get any advantage off their combos or anything like that. But nothing too special. We're just looking to get this back to our hand just so we don't have to uh, worry that much about uh, hand size that often, especially we can start the turn with over seven cards in hand. And it also has a very important trait, weapon trait, uh, which is relevant at our level two game. So the deck only runs 15 zeros, a lot of them being some kind of advantage to plus or hand fix. Um, the main engine here is this level zero Ilya. And on play, you reveal top card, um, add to hand if it's a character, or, um, and then discard a card. Second effect is when you play this card, you can pay, pay one clock yourself to draw one, which is a good, uh, easy way to hand fix early and as well um, gain advantage at a very cheap cost. The deck gets kind of compression-y later on too, so it's not that bad. Um, sometimes in later games you end up using this anyway because you just need to do it. Next, we run three of this, I believe it's a promo in English, yeah. I'm not sure if it's a promo in Japanese as well. I'm pretty sure it is. Basically this Rider, um, or Archer and Lancer card, uh, when it dies you pay two to salvage a character from your waiting room. Uh, the only reason we run this card is because it adds more red to the deck for our level 3 game, but also it is um, a way to hand fix and get pieces back to our hand. So if we lose one of these Lancers early on and we need it later, um, after attacking three times and this goes to the waiting room, we can just pay two to get it back to your hand and then build advantage off of this again whenever it does fail. Uh, it's an effect you don't use often, but you in, you put it in there just for consistency sake. That way uh, you have an easy way to make sure you always get the cards you want. Next we run four of this Brainstorm. It is an Archer Brainstorm. It's a pay one tap itself, mill four. Every climax you hit, uh, salvage a uh, weapon trait character, I believe. Let me double check. Yeah, a uh, weapon trait character, which is basically everyone in the deck except for like uh, Ilya. Um, and then it has a secondary effect, which doesn't really get used that often. It's whenever one of your other characters get reversed, you can give another character 500. Um, it's a self-tap brainstorm, so in the games where you do get totally screwed, it's easy to brainstorm twice a turn since it's only a self-tap. And uh, I guess the other ability is sometimes relevant, but almost never. Going on to our level 1 game, we have this 1-0 uh, Saber. Climax combo, it's on play, becomes a 6k, which is decent, so we can kill things early on um, that we just want to get rid of. That way our opponent doesn't get a free turn, uh, just, just uh, plussing off of us not being able to kill it, because our main game plan is basically running in the Lancer. Uh, the Climax combo it has, it combos with Stock Soul, Yellow Stock Soul. It's on attack, you can bounce one of your other characters to your hand. So the strategy here is you're going to play, play these out at one. 
Um, you play one of these, uh, sometimes two. Uh, and then you uh, attack with this first, you run it in, you reveal the top card, um, you'll know your next trigger, and if you fail it, you know to bounce this back to your hand. Um, the lot of, a lot of setups I like at level one is just one of this, and usually two uh, Lancers. Usually one of them fails, uh, that way the one that fails, it just bounces back to my hand, and then the other one just gets uh, put back into my hand from its own effect. Uh, that way I keep uh, the advantage while dealing a lot of damage. But yeah, um, it's a pretty decent combo. I think there have been some other uh, talks about some other players who are using a different combo. Uh, I think it's at level 2 or something with the Red Slock Soul. But I kind of prefer that combo because I feel like it adds a little bit more consistency. Um, we play a one of this backup. It's We don't really use it for the power. The main factor of it is... Uh, when you do use the backup, you can uh, look at the top card of your deck, leave it there, or put it into the bottom of your deck, I believe. Oh no, it's uh, adds your hand and discard one if it's a Master of Serpent, which is every card in the deck, except for Climaxes. So it digs us one, uh, one step deeper, and it does have a Soul Trigger, which is important for the deck at level 2. We need more Soul Triggers in the deck, for the most part. Um, the only downside to this card is that it's not level 2, which is unfortunate. Um, it's probably a card you would consider cutting anyway. Uh, right now, it's been pretty mediocre at best, which is something I don't really like. So uh, if I ever plan to play this deck uh, more often, I'll probably cut this pretty quickly. Uh, this is another card we're looking at cutting, most likely. Uh, we play it because it's green, we play it because it has a trigger, and it has uh, a somewhat relative effect. It's a, a level support, which is uh, somewhat important, kinda. Um, but it comes out at level 1, so it's not a level 2, so it doesn't help our game plan that much but uh, this Soul Trigger does. And the secondary effect is you can minus 500 somewhere if you'd like on play uh, one of your opponent's characters. So you can kill a lot of important back rolls, row cards and stuff like the support from uh, Sunshine. You can pop that because that, you brainstorm a lot with this deck. Uh, that way they don't get free uh, draws off of that. And then uh, Hatsukaze and stuff like that are 500 though it's not too relevant. But I mean you can randomly kill uh, good cards in the back row with it. Next, we run three of this Lancer. It is a higher level reverser, so when this gets reversed, you send the higher level character to the clock, and then top card of a clock to waiting room and all that stuff. Um, it's played mostly in the deck for uh, the fact that it's green, also has its trigger, and it's level two. And then if you ever play against a deck that has a really um, big strategy of playing uh, a lot of level threes at level two early, then uh, you can get rid of them pretty easily uh, if you don't have your main game plan going. Uh, basically, this is just kind of like a backup plan for the most part, because the next card is what makes the deck so lethal, in my opinion. It is this Gilgamesh level 2. It has an insane climax combo with a stock soul. Um, first of all, it's 7-5. Uh, when uh, it has an act ability, you can discard a weapon trait character. Like I said, um, we use these uh, Lancers a lot early on. This is a weapon trait character. These always bounce back to your hand. Usually when you play this, if you need to get over something, you'll use the Act Effect, which is Ditch uh, Weapon Trait Character, so like the level zero Lancer, uh, to get buff the card 4k. Uh, usually you do that to make sure your over counters and everything like that, because the first effect of the Climax combo, which is very important, is whenever you reverse your battle opponent, you can mill the top cards of your deck, and for every uh, trigger icon, your opponent burns one. So uh, generally, uh, you're burning anywhere from 0 to 4 every time you reverse uh, your opponent, and it's all increments of 1, which makes it very deadly. Um, there's a lot of games where I triple field Gilgamesh, uh, go off, and then I have like Gilgamesh go do like uh, 2, 4, and 4, 2, 2, and 3, and stuff, stuff like that, where I'll snipe out like 4 climaxes in the process of doing it too, as well as these attacks are usually hitting for 2 to 3 with the Stock Soul combo. So there's a lot of games where you'll just play, if you're able to, you'll play three Gilgameshes and then um, combo off and you'll just kill your opponent before they even get to play the level three game. Uh, during the tournament, I did get three, uh, third place. I did kill, I think it was a like six round tournament total. I killed two or three people from level, when they were at level two to dead. Uh, so it just prevented them from even playing their level three game, which is pretty good. This deck is super aggro. Uh, we just run so many level 2s and higher in the deck, so there's a lot of cards in when you're triggering early on too, have a lot of triggers because they're level 2 or higher. So most of your attacks throughout the game are going to hit for anywhere from 
two to four anyway when you're swinging. So early on, you do get a lot of uh, good damage in because your opponent is so uh, decompressed their first refresh. That way, um, they just make you make two and three stick a lot more often. Uh, you just get so much damage in that way. And then that's what basically what keeps you in the game. Uh, usually after you play this, your opponent's basically dead. And if they're not dead, uh, you end up moving on to your level 3 game, which almost never gets played. So we do run 4 healers here. Um, it's early play healer that has a really bad condition to come early play. It's uh, 5 or less cards in your deck. Um, it heals and it gains power for every Shiro and Saber or some, and Rin, I think. Uh, or Archer on the field. Um, Card's basically not very relevant unless you absolutely have to heal. The re main reason we play it is that one, it's a healer. Two, it's a yellow, I guess. Um, three, it's a level three or a level two or higher, so we bounce back our level zeros more often, and it has a trigger. We're trying to play as many cards with triggers. If you haven't noticed, there's just so many cards with triggers in this deck since level one. Next, um, usually if they live after Gilgamesh, we're playing the Saber Musashi. Uh, it's basically Musashi that gains some power. Uh, we play this because, um, once again, level 2 or higher to help our level 0 game, and it has a trigger. And then after your opponent somehow lives, lives through Gilgamesh, this is an easy card to close out the game with, because with this you're usually sing swinging for um, anywhere from 2 to five or two to 4 damage, usually. And if that cancels, you mill the top card of your deck. Uh, we have so many uh, level ones and higher in the deck that you're guaranteed to usually burn for like two to four uh, more often than not. Uh, it's a good way to close out the game, especially when your opponent's like at three, 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 four, and you just play three of these, and then usually they're dead. They have to like cancel six times to live from there. Um, our backup level three game, which we also play four of here, is. Um, this archer, the main effect that we really care about is on attack, reveal the top card of your deck. It, for whatever level it is, you burn that much. It has a resonance ability we don't use. And then I believe it gets power for some condition. Oh yeah, if all your characters are basically characters, it gains 1k. Um, so uh, in some cases, you will play this because uh, just how the game played out, you weren't able to set up any hand for uh, Musashis or anything. You usually play something like one to two of these and an arch or lancer, and you run the lancer in first to see what your top check is for your next uh, swing. So if you see like a level one or higher, then you know to swing with this. Otherwise, you just go for something else. Um, it's a good way to check your uh, what you're gonna burn that way, which is a lot of fun. And uh, you, like I said, this is your backup uh, game finisher to close out games. Um, it's not really played that often. There's a like I said, you occasionally play it because your hand setup is just too poor to like really do anything after Gilgamesh, and this is what you drew into or can only salvage. Finally, we run two of this uh, archer. Um, its main purpose really is to, I mean, we could cheat out um, stuff if we don't have the stock with it. It's like you ditch a card to summon a, uh, something lo your level or lower. And the second effect is the more important effect that gets used more often is in certain matchups after your Gilgamesh turn. Um, you can uh, target level threes when you play this and kill them. I said, send them directly to the waiting room. Let me see, what was the cost? It is, yeah, um, put a card from your hand into the waiting room. So you can ditch a card to pop a level three or lower on your opponent's front row. That way you can swing into open slots, you don't have to worry about certain counters or anything like that, or any um, uh, like darkness counters and stuff, for anti-damage counters. Uh, things against Conti and stuff like that. It's kind of important to get into this card. And then finally, we end it with four stock soul, and then four more stock soul. The whole reason we even do this, well, we have to run this for the combo, but the reason we were just run um, eight two triggers is because if you ever mail one of these during your Gilgamesh combo, um, it counts as two damage instead of one. So uh, you can have really explosive turns. There's a couple turns where I would uh, mill two and they'd be double climaxes and they'd take four damage increments of one, uh, which is absolutely insane. Um, that card is such a good finisher, uh, and it pushes the pushes your opponent so hard at level two. When usually a lot of people are not expecting it, um, but usually if you do play against someone who knows what they're doing, they'll have like some kind of stat counter or something like that. But it's still a really really scary combo if your opponent can't do anything about it. And the fact that uh, Gilgamesh, you can just buff it 4K anytime you like by ditching a card. Um, 
on uh, it just you can, you can make it big enough to get over anything and you don't have to really worry about uh, not being able to reverse something other than some kind of sack counter. So yeah, um, this is a deck I don't think a lot of English players even think about or when people even look at Fate even think about it because um, I think it's the Gilgamesh in English is super cheap compared to Japanese because uh, a lot of Japanese players played this deck. It's probably one of the only current Fate decks that I would consider somewhat relevant, though with the recent release of Kimono Friends, um, it becomes a lot less relevant. Um, but yeah, if you're looking to play this in Japanese, I really consider looking up some Japanese versions of the list uh, because there are some promo cards you cannot get in English. For example, the 2-1 free refresh you could get in Japanese. Also um, from, I forgot what booster it was from, it was from an extra booster. There is a yellow pay one, ditch one, search one. If you have access to that or in your in a store that lets you play Japanese English mix or anything like that, I would really consider just completely cutting um, this and adding in uh, three to four um, pay one, ditch one, search ones. That card is super helpful. Uh, unfortunately, just you don't have access to a pay one, ditch one, search in English. Otherwise, I would be playing it in the deck, especially since it's yellow. Since when you do play eight yellow stock souls, you want to have more, more targets in the waiting room to stock away later, especially level zeros. That way, you know, you don't trigger that later on or in the combo with uh, Gilgamesh, you're not uh, milling uh, cards with no triggers. But besides that, guys, I think that is it. If you have any questions on the deck or any other deck profiles you're looking forward to, just leave a comment below. Like, comment, subscribe if you enjoy the work and everything. But um, yeah, I hope to see you guys in the next video.